Well, the scripture teaches us is one who follows the disciplines of the mentor. That's a disciple. And, and we know that Jesus had 12 disciples. At one time, he had 70 disciples. Some of them walked away from Robert. So we understand that that discipleship was just something that you did as you followed along with him. And when you did that, you had to understand that there was a discipline that took place, that all of us have disciplines in our life that we need to sure up and help. And, and if you've been in the military, you know that one of the big key words in the military, isn't it discipline? Isn't that why we want to send our kids there? Amen, because we struggle with our own discipline at home or taking care of them or getting them the discipline. And, you know, we've all kind of walked through that, but we know if they get there, they get paid to be disciplined. That's another cool thing. Fasting releases your potential. Fasting is a part of the faith life. In a fast, now, again, I wasn't brought up in church. So when I first time I heard that it, fasting was a word like when I heard the word tithe. I didn't know what a tithe, I think I called it teeth. First time I heard it. I didn't know what a hymnal was. I didn't know how to sing out of a hymnal book. I didn't know any of the, the, the stuff some of you may have been brought up in. So when I saw the word fast, it, you know, it's a fascinating word. And, and I read where Jesus fasted 40 days and, and, he, and he fought the devil. I'm thinking, oh, I wonder what this secret was. It helped him fight the devil. And then I found out it was doing without food. And I thought, come on. If you lose, go without food, you lose your strength. You know, I mean, it, it, it just seems to, not, but, but there was a supernatural element that came in here. And by the way, he didn't do without water. Don't get this in your head that you can go, you can go, and, and, and I know what you're thinking, Pastor, I can't even skip a meal. Americans. Amen. In a fast, the believer chooses for a set time to do without something that is hard to do without. This is done so that it does not come between the believer and God. So it cannot act as a God over that relationship and over the life of the believer. Everybody catch that? It's something that, that you can give up for a short time. It may be something that's coming between you and God. Usually the fast is to do without food. Food is one of the great blessings of God in our lives. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Oh, it's a true pleasure and a true necessity. Oh, I, I, I love, I, I am, that, I'm the, the older I get, the more I watch that food channel. You know, that diners, dive-ins, and drives, and I, I got to watch the bizarre food. Who eats that stuff, man? But I still got to watch it because it's a part of their culture, you know. And if you come to my culture, I heard somebody say something about fat back the other day. I hadn't heard any of y'all talk about fat back in years. But when I was brought up, you had fat back. Fat back's a real cheap bacon. And you just throw it into beans, you know, and it's got, if you fried it, it's got a nice crust on it that'll break your tooth. You know, I, I was brought up with, with uh, I, if I said chitlin, some of you would just uh, couldn't believe it. Hey, man, we did, well, well, a hog could go all winter if you cooked him right. You had pig feet and, 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 de- and, and hog ears. And I mean, you, you, there ain't nothing on that hog. You could, you could eat everything but the squeal. Amen. And it was just our culture. So food's been a great thing, a true pleasure, a true necessity. But humans tend to be gluttons. And we want to eat more. Our hunger can compel us, force our hand, and occupy our thoughts. And we, when we have anything in our lives that we don't or can't say no to, then it begins to start lording over us. But we understand that Jesus is Lord. And if something else takes up God's place in our life, it is an idol. And we are believing in, uh, we are living in something akin to idolatry. We don't want that. Fasting helps to bring back into enough control for us to surrender it to God so it can be returned to its rightful place in life. Food is the foremost example of such a thing because literally, guys, some of you, uh, you come, you know, we, we even stage church life around it if we're not careful. Food just begins to... Uh, Consume, because especially as believers in Christ, many of us uh, we we quit we quit all the the te- the eens, you know the the nicotine the caffeine the uh, the alcoholine, <laughs> amen all that. So when you do that, you say, well, what's left, Pastor? You know, so we got we all get into food. But the truth of the matter is, is is food is you, you either eat to live or you live to eat. And what happened in my life in September, I started eating to live. And I started shifting everything around. Now, like most of you, I backslid at Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas. 
Amen. I just didn't fall off the wagon one day, Ben. I just went all the way, man. I stayed at it. So when I hit January, I said, all right, God, I don't want to be hypocritical about this, but I got to start getting this body and getting myself back into shape again and get under control again and deal with who I am. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. We're going to pull some verses out here to help you see this. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Verse 5. When you pray, do not be like hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Verse 16, when you fast. Do you see something going on here? It says, when you give, when you pray, when you fast. Do you notice the word if ain't in there? So it's, it's a when you're doing it. So it's important that you have a win in your life. Do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting. But only to your Father who is unseen and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I ask that you just give us new revelation, new understanding. Let us grasp hold of the beginning of 2017, that how we begin this year may have a lot to do with how it ends, that our genesis will determine our revelation. God, help us to grasp the, the, the very principle of, of giving and praying and fasting and the disciplines of a disciple. I thank you for this group here today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen god bless you galatians 5 22 says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and the ugly word yeah that's right self-control against such things there is no law now the scripture teaches us not to be carried away by every wind of doctrine in other words throughout the church world over the over years many kind of weird doctrines can fly through the church now over 30 years of me being born again i've seen some crazy stuff come in and out of the church and some of that it sounds oh that sounds good because all of it's laced with a little bit of truth now this is not one of those crazy doctrines this is something that jesus taught something jesus did amen and as a discipline in his life I believe there were times that he did fast on earth, as you already know, 40 days against the devil. But there were other times that he would do it. And here's the thing. We may do this for a couple of weeks here in January. But the truth of the matter is, if we can learn to live a fasted life, in other words, that there would be some times in our life where we pull back and say, you know what, i got to get control of this thing here, then, then we'll find that life becomes a whole lot easier. Now, fasting has a tremendous amount of benefits to it. The Hebrew word for fasting means to cover the mouth. In other words, it would be this. Some of us could fast negative talk, gossip, criticism. Just try it. See how much more friends you keep. I mean, if we could just fast, or if we could just hush them up, shut our mouth, amen, or cover the mouth, and we could take care of it. The Greek word actually means to abstain. Just to abstain, to leave that thing alone right there. The Jews were commanded by God to fast. It illustrated their submission to his will. So fasting takes discipline and self-control. There are two types of fasting in the word of God. First, there's a full fast. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to let you decide what you want to do. This is, you know, I'll let you know what I'm doing. Uh, my staff will know what I'm doing, so that way we can work this together. But we're not here to try to, uh, let me just, some of you will fast Facebook or, or something like that. But here. You don't have to go on Facebook. Face, Facebook. You don't have to go on Facebook and tell everybody you're doing it. Just leave it alone. Just back away from it for a season. Let them wonder if they should check the old bit for you. you know, just give them. You just, you just, so you don't have to go on. You just, you just don't. Just leave it alone. The same way with fasting, you don't have to tell everybody you're fasting. One of the things I like to do is keep a toothpick in my mouth. That way, folk leave me alone. They think I've already ate. So just, just kind of walk around that way. But our, our staff will know, and my wife and I, we, we get together on it because it, it, it's one thing for you to say, okay, I'm going to fast food today, and the other one say, I think I'll just leave, uh, uh, you know, something else alone, and they eat in front of you. And that, that's all right too, but you can find other things to do than to sit there and stare at one another at the dinner table. All right, you can get your Bible over. So first, what Jesus did for 40 days, he went without food, but he didn't go without water. You can actually do that, guys. It's an extended period without food. I wouldn't say 40 days. I would try first a day. Don't jump out there and go, I'm going 21 days without food. 
You know what'll happen? Watch this. Your body will start draining itself of the sugars and the and the and the uh, the the eans, all the things you've been putting in it, and you'll be at somebody's throat in no time. You will find that you got anger issues that you've been covering up with with Twinkies. <laughs> you'll find out all kind of things that are inside of you. You know that that you have. It's just going to start coming. To, so do it in increments. Start start first with a meal or or cutting something out. You know, years ago I cut out sodas out of my life, and I did that in August. It wasn't in September. I just I just started fasting drinks the next thing because I was addicted to diet cokes. Man, coach, I love diet cokes. You got a diet coke issue, don't you? That's what I heard. All right, uh, but but I just kind of let it go, you know. And, and and all of a sudden, next thing I knew, I, I quit drinking diet cokes. And it just it, it pretty much just put sodas. Now every now and then I'll sip a root beer at a at a show or something. Again, this is slipping off the wagon thing. Uh, but but I get back on it real quick. Se- uh, second, it's partial. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, which we Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fasted veg- uh, uh, all other foods of the king's food. They were brought in. You remember Daniel. Daniel was made a unit, which means they removed his ability to reproduce. They removed it all from all the other eunuchs, which would have been Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, they literally kidnapped these boys. This is a wicked time. And then they made them into slaves. By doing so... They worked in the king's palace. Now, you know what God did? He promoted Daniel. He made him a third over the, the whole kingdom of Babylon before it was over with because he was so faithful and he had an excellent spirit in him. But Daniel went before the, uh, the, the people there and he said, please test your servants for 10 days. So it's just a 10-day fast here. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat and the royal food, which means all the, the, the fat, the greasy, whatever they got, you know, the... the, the uh, chocolates and whatever, and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this, and they tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. Now, here's the truth of fasting. When you start fasting, your skin clears up. Things that, you, uh, things that you've been medicating over, it's going to start going away. And you're going to start feeling deprived that you don't have to have your prescriptions anymore. You're going to have to go to the doctor and say, excuse me, I don't need this anymore because I'm eating right today. How many know most of the drugs that we take are because of the way we refuse to eat right? Well, don't give me an amen. I'll save that for the next congregation. Uh Uh-huh. So they tried them for 10 days, and they got healthier. They got better. Amen. Things cleared up. Their sinuses were better. Their, their, their face was better. Everything. So, so we fast for several reasons. First, for personal sanctity. I humbled myself with fasting, David said. There's something about fasting that says, God, I am yours. Everything I am is yours. I'm letting this go. What, what is the good of it all? It's valuable aid to, to sanctify oneself. The Bible teaches us, and please forgive me for a runny nose here. I've had, I'll just be honest with you. My dogs need a bath, and they came in the house last night because of the cold. And when they got in the house, they wouldn't leave me alone. If my dogs are so big, you pet them. (laughs) Or die. (laughs) Behind many a besetting sin, behind eels that affect fellowship and clog the channels of a believer's service, uh, the clash of personalities and temperament, strife and division, lies that insidious pride of the human heart. Pride in a two-full stomach our first cousins. If I were to ask any uh, church world people, uh, what was the sin of Sodom? Immediately, they would say that the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was homosexuality. But that wasn't the sin of Sodom. If you study the scripture and you look at the book uh, of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 49, it says, now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, unconcerned, and they did not help the poor and needy. Let me say something about our nation. We're right on that verge. We are overfed and unconcerned. Other people's plights and somehow we don't even care about them. And, and we don't care about the poor. Now, I'm not speaking of the church world so much, but I'm telling you that there's times in life that you've got to get back to the understanding that, God, that could be us. That could be where I was. And there's something about doing without food that helps you to have more money at the end of the month. Hello. And be able to help other people with it. He said, they're not even concerned. Uh, I've said this uh, several times, but, but a newspaper man asked another guy. He said, hey, man, do you know what the two worst problems in America are? The man said, I don't know and I don't care. He said, you got them both right. This is our problem. We don't know and we don't care. We don't want to know. 
My heart hurts when you get information and you find out people. You know, I, I saw our people affected when we went down to Star of Hope and gave things away. We've had other groups go and do that. I love the fact that we're still reaching out. We're still helping people. Even it, it doesn't have to be Christmas for that to happen. Amen. That throughout the year, we are able to do this. We've done it out at the ranch. We've taken people in. So we remind ourselves of that. Fasting, then, is a divine corrective to the pride of the human heart. It is a discipline of the body with a tendency to humble the soul. We fast to be heard on high is another reason we fast. I want God to hear me. I want him to hear me. Jesus said there's certain things that only come out through prayer. And I'm sorry, J.L. Certain things only come out through prayer and fasting. So praying, yeah, we'll do that. But fasting means, I mean business. Fasting means, okay, I'm putting this aside, God, and I'm going to talk to you about this. And, and Ezra was a scribe. He was, he was somebody who, who uh, Artaxerxes had, had given permission to, take, to go back into Jerusalem. He was taking uh, other people back in with him. And he said, I proclaim to fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him, for a safe journey for us and our children. And he was nervous about asking Artaxerxes to send soldiers. He'd already bragged about how good God was. And he said, you know, the truth of the matter is I, uh, God is going to take care of us. And so they fasted. And with all our possessions, I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from the enemies on the road because we had told the king, the gracious hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him and his, ang and, and his great anger is against all who forsake him. So we fasted and petitioned our God about this and he answered our prayer. In other words, he gave a safe passage. He protected us. If you want to protect your family, your prayer, brother, you got to put a little fasting in it. You got to start believing God that this thing's. And again, you could go back and say, now, Pastor, that's a New Testament thing. This is Old Testament. This thing has been being practiced from the beginning of time that believers would practice fasting. Fasting is designed to put uh, wings on your prayers. Fasting is designed to drive back oppressing powers of darkness and looses the captives. It will give a child of God an edge over the enemy. Fasting with prayer says, I mean business. Fasting often brings pressure for a breakthrough to come in warfare, a situation that calls for people of violence. The Bible says that, that we take things violently. Well, it means literally we take it by force. We fast to change God's mind. Excuse me. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you like to, don't you try to change one another's mind, you spouses? And you realize that, that what you did when you got married was uh, <laughs> you conned one another. And now you, you're messing with each other, trying to manipulate, intimidate, changing their minds. doesn't work. But we have a God that said, you want to change my mind? Give it a shot. Go ahead. Show me you mean business. Because right now this is where I'm heading. The Ninevites, God had set up this thought that the, the Ninevites was the Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, that he was going to kill, destroy the whole city. It became so wicked. Now, here's something that we don't talk a lot about, but I am not always convinced that every hurricane, every earthquake, every calamity is not somehow God used in order to drive people back to him. Okay? I ain't saying God sent them. I'm just saying it happens on earth, but it's to use, be used to send us back to him. Now, Nineveh was a wicked place, and God decided he was going to send a prophet. A prophet was somebody who was an oracle, a conduit to speak his voice. He was one that's going to share what heaven said to them. Now, Nineveh was wicked in that when they would ever go in and destroy the, uh, the Israelites, they would decapitate them and stack their heads as a pyramid in the gate of the city to intimidate them. This man, Jonah, hated the Ninevites. He did not like these people. And God spoke a word to him and said, Go to Nineveh and tell them that unless they repent, I'm going to destroy them all. The truth of the matter is, many of us who say we really love God don't love people. We struggle with people. We struggle with different cultures. And so this was also Jonah's problem. He didn't want to go. 
So the scripture says he went down into a ship and he went the opposite direction. As he's going the opposite direction, a storm came up. The storm began to cast the ship back and forth. And these men, being a little bit on the superstitious side, began to roll what is called lots. And the, I don't know if it was bones or, or, or dice or whatever, but it fell on this man Jonah. They knew they had this stranger in the hole of the ship. So they go down and they knock on the door. When they knock on the door, there is Jonah asleep in the boat. They knock on it. Jonah opens the door and says, what is it? They said, there's a storm outside, and uh, and somehow we threw these cards, and they said, you're the man. And Jonah goes, oh, we're in trouble. And Cammy, they said, what's what's, what's the trouble here? And they said, the trouble is, and Jonah's speaking, he said, I serve a great God. And he said, okay, that's good, but but what's the trouble? Well, God told me to go. And, and, And then what? Well, I said, no. So they grab his butt, and they bring him to the top of the ship. Now they got another dilemma on their hands. Now what do we do with this man of God? And Jonah said, unless you throw me over. And they tried. They lightened the ship, man. They, they threw wedding supplies over. Uh, uh, they, 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 they threw children's supplies over. They, they, they threw everything they could to lighten the ship, but the ship was still being tossed. And Jonah said, guys, unless you throw me overboard, this ship and all of you are going to perish. Then one guy got a great idea. He's telling the truth. Let's throw him over. Amen. So I, they grabbed him up and one, two, three, they hoisted his butt over the top. Now here's the thing that gets me when I look at this story. And I ain't got time to preach the whole thing, but I'll tell you this. There are people at times that even in the church world, that in churches, that until they get their butt thrown out, the church never uh, gets to establish or make it. And now that's a tough word, I know, because some of you are thinking, is it me? I hope not. I hope we can keep you all. But the truth is that there are times that some people are called to go do something else and they stay in the safety of a church. When God told them to go somewhere else and to go do and to go preach or to go share or go say something to somebody else. So here, Jonah, he gets thrown overboard. The ship gets calm. Everything's good. Everything's good until the sound came up behind Jonah. Boom, 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 boom. Do y'all know that sound? That's the sound of a big fish. I don't know what it's about, but whenever I'm in the ocean, I'm always listening for boom, 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 boom. Bon, bon. And this fish comes up behind Jonah, swallows him, and takes him down to the belly of the earth. He stayed in the, in the whale's belly for three days, 71 hours and 55 minutes, almost three days in the belly's well. Now, there's a stubbornness that comes on God's people that amazes me. How that you can be so stubborn to be being digested in the belly of a well and not repent or call out to God. The Bible says it took three days for him to finally give it up. Some of you, you go through things in life, you go, I ain't giving up, I ain't giving in. And God said, I'll I'll just hold you right here. See, God will put you in a fix to fix you. You, 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 You're you're a mess, but until God decides I want to fix you, then then you're going to stay a mess. So God puts you in this place, and there he is in the belly of the well, and he's he's literally being, it's acid wash, man. I mean, he's just getting it going over him. And the Bible says that Jonah decided to pray. Good idea, because I'm sure you've been fasting for the last three days. I can't imagine eating anything that come down the gullop of that thing, man. So he's in there praying, and I'm sure he's been fasting. He said, Lord, Lord, forgive me. He said, I'll do whatever you tell me to do now, that this is a good thing. So the well takes him to the edge, and the Scripture says he prayed toward Jerusalem. I don't know. How do you find Jerusalem in the bottom of the well? It also says he prayed at night, even gave a time. I don't know if his watch glowed in the dark. I don't know anything about what was going on, but somehow Jonah got hold of God. And five minutes before deadline, he begins to pray, and the Bible says that God threw him, had to well throw him up, regurgitate him, propel him. How I many know what it's like when your kid eats too many donuts? It's coming out of there, man, and all of a sudden it's slung forward, and he lands up on the beach. Now, I can't imagine what he looked like at that time, but in my head, I'm thinking, okay, he's got well slime on him. He hits the sand. You know, some of you love beaches. I ain't real fond of them because that sand gets all in the crevices of the human body, and I ain't real cool with all that. But he rolls up on the beach, and now he looks like a a Havana cigar. He stands up, and he begins to walk. The Bible even declares he has seaweed in his mouth. Oh, he's got, it's wrapped around him, seaweed. So he comes about, and he walks into the city, and he looks at a Ninevite, into the city of Nineveh, and he says to them, in 40 days, and you can read it for yourself, because some of you don't believe I'm saying this, in 40 days, God's going to kill every one of y'all. Hallelujah. (laughs) Now, the message was, go tell them to, to repent and do right. Well, he left that part out. 
Because why? He don't like them. He's, had to, he, he's endured three days in the belly of a whale. He, he's been fasting for three days. And now when he gets there, he tells them, in three, and, and God's going to kill every one of y'all. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, and you, you got to read another, you got to read John, that, that, that after they saw him, they decided, boy, we better get right. You know, there's sometimes you look at people in their plight and you realize, man, I don't want to end up like that guy. So I'm going to repent. So they all repented. The scripture said the Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast and all of them. And the greatest of the least put on sackcloth. Then God saw what they had did and, and how they turned from their evil ways. He had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. For, for their generation, God did not destroy them. Later, Nineveh turned back against God and they were destroyed. But during this generation, God took care of them. God has flexible laws when dealing with us. He had, sin is visited with judgment, repentance with mercy. You, when you're, you're humble, God will bless you. When you're arrogant, you're going down. Amen. That's the way God does it. Next slide, please. Next slide there, Marie. The Bible says in Jeremiah 18, if in any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warn repents of its evil, then I re will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. Please write that verse down. Please remember this, and let me say it again. And if any time the United States that I've warned through my prophets and my preachers repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. God is a parent. He's a father. And any of you moms and dads know in here that times your kids act up, don't tell them you don't snatch them. Don't tell them you don't grab them by the ear. Some of you, oh, you even went as far as spanking them. I won't tell on you. But I've told on my daddy. Because he will, man, I've, I've woke my kids before. I did, whatever it takes, God, it don't mean I don't love you. The truth, that means I love you. Amen. There has to be some correction here. God said, if you, if you repent, you turn around. I mean, you know, sometimes you're just waiting on that kid just to say the right thing. Woo, please say the right thing so I ain't got to do this. Don't make me do this to you. It's going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> I swore my daddy was lying. <laughs> when God defers an evil day, it could mean the salvation of multitudes. When God puts off an evil day, it could mean it literally. So learn how to fast, my friend. Learn how to pray. Learn how to believe God. And to start closing with this, we fast to free the captives. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen, Isaiah 58? That whole chapter is a chapter on fasting. To choose the, the, uh, that I've chosen to loose the chains of injustice, untie the cords of the yoke, and to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Isaiah even goes on to say that some of your fasting has turned into fighting. Don't let this thing get so bad. Again, I would say to you that, that if fasting is causing you to be somebody that's uh, hard to be around, eat a Snickers. Because you ain't you when you're hungry. Hello. I had a sweet friend that texted me about said, Pastor, I've been fasting, but I'm hungry. That's the truth. You, you, you're supposed to be hungry. Amen. Drink lots of water. Drink lots of juice. Hydrate your body. Take care of yourself. But the bottom line is, is you don't think you can do without it, but you can. You can go without certain foods. Some of you, with this month, you, you, I, you know, I, I like the Daniel fast. I call it soup, salad, and cereal. You know, it's just simple. It's, it's not what I'm not going to eat. It's what I'm eating. This is what I'm going to eat. I'm going to throw some fruit in there. I'll take a few days off from eating. But pretty much this one I do eat, this is what I'm going to eat. And I have found that you can sustain yourself without chicken fried steak and gravy and potatoes, yeast rolls. You can sustain yourself without bread. You don't have to always eat fajitas saturated with guacamole and sour cream. Come on, can I get an amen? <laughs> I'm messing you up right now, ain't I? I'm reminding you, the goodness of God in the land of the living. That comes February. But the next three weeks, my prayer is that we start fasting. Some of us have needs in our life. We, we have relational needs. We have uh, financial needs. We've got needs with our children. But if I can start fasting and tell God, because, uh, listen, be honest with you, my only hope right now is God. My only hope in what's going on in my life is God. I fasted God would give me children. I fasted and believed God. I was unable to have children. And out of nowhere, 
And I say this with much, you know, I, and I, I, it ain't so much that I'm favored. I, I just feel like God, God just done it to me. But next thing, I, we're traveling on the road, and I get a phone call. There's a little girl, 11 months old, needs a mom and daddy. We go snatch her. I didn't ask if she was black, brown, yellow, purple. I just knew there was a kid that needed a mom and dad. And I snatched her up, and her name is Mandy. Then did the same thing with Josiah and Judah. You know, I, 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 and, and then God gave me Katie and Jill. So it's, it's you, you start praying. You don't know how God's going to bring things into your life, but when you start fasting, you start believing God for it. You know, many believers, uh, one of the things about us is when you got born again, that's why I don't use the word Christian now as much. Uh, I say believers because a lot of us, when we got born again, we got saved, but we didn't get delivered. We come out of stuff. We're going to heaven, but we're still struggling with stuff. And you can struggle with a long time. You know, Simon the sorcerer in Acts chapter 8 was saved and he wanted to buy the Holy Ghost. And Peter had to rebuke him. There are believers bound by fear, resentment, jealousy, and uncleanness, knowing full well that their lives are in full contradiction to the liberating gospel they profess. You tell everybody you love Jesus and you ate up with jealousy. You ate up with envy. You, you ate up with all different types of things you like. Fasting helps me to get control of it. Fasting will give you press, give you authority and pressure for the breakthrough. Results of fasting, it loosens the bonds of wickedness. It undoes heavy burdens. It feeds the hungry. It shelters the poor and clothes the naked. The result, Isaiah 58 uh, verse 8 says, Then your light will break forth, your healing will quickly appear, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. This is fasting. Stay with this just a minute. Then, everybody say then. then. And which is the word after it's after, after you fasted a while, after you stepped in, then your light will break forth. Your healing will quickly appear, which means they were fasting for healing, and God gave them healing. Your healing will quickly appear, and the glory of the Lord will be what? Your rear guard. Well, it's the one thing that all of us need guarding is our backsides, where the knives go, where the backbiting is. God said, I'll take care of your back. Whoo, that's a deal. Stand with me. I shake hands with the Father on that one. You know I mean? I throw down a little fasting. I need to do it anyway. I need to take care of this anyway. Now, here's what I'd like for us to do. Give me them uh, buckets right here. Uh, H, come here and help me out. Kenny, come here and help me out. Bob, come here and help me out. Give each one of these guys a bucket. Y'all spread out along here if you would. But, uh, over here, to Kenny, Kenny, right here, these buckets, these buckets. We got a couple buckets today. The Bible says, when you pray, when you give, when you fast. Give me one of those, Robert. If you will. What we've got, the Bible talks about the anointing oil. That there's, there's, and, and it, it was made by the apothecary, by a perfumer. And the oil had certain ingredients in it with it. It had ointure in it, which was made out of a shell, which was a uh, healing, a shell that came out of the Mediterranean. They'd ground up, and the ointure would be for healing. And then there was galbanum in it, gall which was a numbness, which means, uh, it, 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 you know, a lot of times before you get a shot, they'll try to numb the spot. had frankincense in it to give it a smell and remind you of worship. It had stature, which would come out of a tree that, that, that was pierced to remind us that he was pierced on a tree. Those were the four ingredients of anointing oil. And today, they don't exactly mix it that way, but we did the best we could with it. But there's something the Scripture said, and I remember years ago, guys, I would, I would pray over people, and I would get oil, and I would anoint people with oil. And then I reread it again. And it says, when you pray, when you give, and it's, when you fast, anoint, put oil on your head. Anoint yourself. Wash your face so everybody don't know you're doing this. And get on with your life. So this morning... And we don't often do this, but I would like for those that, and, and this has a little intimidation factor, and I apologize for that because I'm not here to intimidate you. And I know we have guests here, so don't feel like you've got to do this. But if you would like, we're going to pray together up here at the front, and we're going to anoint ourselves with oil. And, we're gonna, and if you want your children to fast with you, that's your call. 
years ago, I remember our, my kids would give up video games for a, for a couple of weeks. Uh, I remember giving up football. All, I gave myself one game. Don't hurt yourself. Don't, 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 don't get so mad you can't handle it. You know I'm going to watch one game tomorrow night. So, so give yourself a little something to celebrate toward. But here's the thing. Don't fast just to be fasting. Bring what you've got that you believe in God for, whether it be healing. When God gave me my children, let me say this. Some of you have been praying for kids. You pray for them. But they're going to be the thing you're going to pray about the rest of your life. My Jesus. Every week, there's something new. You get, you take care of Fred, and here come Frida. Amen. If you'd like to fast with us this month, would you come up, stand with me, get you a little bit of oil, let's declare something together. Just stay up here with me. Just spread out off to the edges there, guys. I think we can get everybody up here. watching this on holywild.tv and if I'm talking to you that means you are I want you to fast with us go into your kitchen get you some Crisco or go out into the your garage and get some WD-40 just something with some oil to it maybe some fat back you got on the back of the stove but you're going to pray with us today we're going to start for 21 days between now and the end of the month we're going to believe God for the best we're going to believe God for your healing and our healing. I'm praying I'll be off these crutches this month. Amen, that God's going to take care of that. Now, guys, we're going to leave this oil up here also. So anybody that wants to come up here and get one later, you're welcome to come up here and get one. All right? Amen. Everybody got one? Now pass them on back. Pass them on back. Let's pass that bucket on back there. There you go. Y'all look good up here. Some of y'all ain't been to the altar in years. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Not fast for my business. Amen. Those of you that have are, are employers, I'd be fasting over my business. And, you know, guys, when you get sick, when your body gets sick, you're going to fast. Your body will shut down. It will be a mandatory. It just shuts down. You ain't eating. You can't eat. Because your body says, I need to get well. Well, this is a way that we say, okay, I'm going to get you well, body. I'm going to take care of you. Now, everybody here, would you say this? Would you see on the overhead with me? Let's declare this together. God, you created everything. Therefore, I belong to you. I submit to your claim on my life. Your care for me is supreme. Your plans for me are great. I am partnered with you in your kingdom. My salvation is sure, and my future is bright. Amen. Now listen, let me say this about oil. A little dab would do you. All right, don't go pour this whole thing on your head. You ain't got to be more spiritual than me or anyone else. Amen. Just take a little dab on your finger there. Amen. For you former Catholics, you can make the mark of the cross on your forehead if you want to. It makes you feel better. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Everybody knows yourself. Lord Jesus, I commit myself to fasting, praying, giving, believing that things are going to change. I'm believing you for my children, my finances, my church, my health, my healing. God, I give you praise. I repent for this nation and this nation's sake. Lord, relent from calamities, problems, things that could hurt America. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Put your oil in your pocket. Hang on to it. That's your oil. Let me say this to you. Somewhere during this week, next week, you're going to be reaching for that oil again. This ain't a one-time anointing. The Bible says, as you fast, when you're fasting, don't forget to anoint yourself. Now, Guys, I don't know how it works. Peggy, I don't know how it works. I don't know how aspirin works. 
I don't know how antibiotics work. I don't know how uh, 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 Geritol works. I don't know how any of that stuff works. I just told if I take it, it would make me better. So when my head hurts, I, a lot of times I pray and take an aspirin. Amen. When doing so, my head quits hurting, and I go on. I don't know how suntan lotion works. I just know if I don't wear it, I look funny. All right, so I put it on, and it works. The same way with the anointing. I don't always know how the anointing works, but I trust God in this. Amen. Go back to your seat real briefly, if you would. A little bit more business, and then we'll close out of here. Those watching us again by holywild.tv, don't forget, guys, stay with this. Stay the purpose. Uh, your head may hurt. Your body may ache some. There'll be changes. But health is coming your way in Jesus' name. Amen? Now, let, let me give you some closing comments here. Jesus speaks to the hypocrites who fast so that other people are impressed. Fast or not, getting others to say, wow, that's one holy dude. This ain't about other people looking at us for that. Fast or for yourself. It's not showing non-believers or fellow believers how holy you are. They're, that's not the point. It's The point is the relationship between you and God. If I get our servant leaders to come back up for a moment. Suffering caused by fast are not an excuse for you being grouchy, stingy, or rude. It can make your mind get weak and unable to focus, which can make angry actions. When it does, please stop fasting because you're starting to harm yourself. Eat something. Eat something. Don't beat yourself up on this point. Martin Luther said, He wants nothing at all to do with you if by your fasting you court him as if you were a great saint. And yet, meanwhile, nurse a grudge or anger against your neighbor. If while you're fasting, you're unable to forgive, you're missing the whole point. Learn to let people go. Amen. Now, before we take out and give you an offering envelope, let me say something. Marie, you got that thing up there for me? We've been saying this now for years, haven't we? As we give today, haven't we been saying that for years now? Yeah. And we've been saying it like this. As we give today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs, more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor. Stop. Next, next slide there. There it is. We paid off the little country church last week. Go to the next slide and see what happens. Boom! Dead free. Can I get an amen? amen? That's both churches and the whole camp. Paid off. Man. Wow. Now, where does that leave us? Let me tell you where that leaves us. We found termites in this building this year. Last week. We done started tearing a room out back there where we found them. If you look around the building, there's a blue line running around it. We fix some poke holes all the way around this building and pump it full of uh, anti-termite deterrent. And that's, uh, that's a $6,400 bill. And then we've got to go back and repair the building. But this is a 10-year fix. Hallelujah. So actually pretty inexpensive. So I'm telling you, expenses don't stop just because we paid off the debt. We still got things to do. So your tithe, your offerings are very, very important to the church. And, uh, again, a tithe is a discipline of a believer. So if you need to tithe or offer an envelope, uh, hallelujah, just to celebrate with a paid-off building and church, glory. Doesn't that feel good? We don't have to say it. We all, some of you almost said pay off the church at the end, didn't you? Because we've been used to saying it. But we don't say that anymore. That's over with. Amen. You can give me a little something back there. Just a little something soft. There you go. Silence is threatening. Tomorrow, I have one more funeral. Four funerals in one week. It's been a tough week for our church. Hard week. Please pray for those that were left here. Yesterday, I made a statement that I've never said before. It just came to me as I walked to the platform. Many of you remember Lawrence Barker. Lawrence been part of my life for almost 20 years, probably 20 years. He passed away like a spiritual father. Just a funny old fellow, too. 
But I said, I'm, I'm sad. I'm not sad that Lawrence is gone. I'm sad that we're all still here. We got to move through this life. We got to keep pressing through this life. Amen. We got to do. They have fought their fight. They have kept their faith. And they got a crown of righteousness. But we still got a little ways to go. We got more things to do here. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for your giving today. Go ahead, guys. Joseph, give me a song. Amen. Our seniors are going to be meeting today right after the service. So our seniors with a purpose. So hang out today with them and enjoy the time with the riches, the riches of the riches. Amen. Thank you for your, uh, just, can, can, just stepping up with us and fasting, believing God for us. And I remember fasting to pay off the church. You know, that's one thing I won't have to fast to do now. Amen. Yeah. Uh, our ladies going to have a game night. Sister Marie going to be gathering with the ladies in New Caney on the 13th, which will be Saturday. Uh, so see that slide also. And do what it says. Come on out, ladies. And then we got uh, a children's choir. And it's just kind of in our heart. We, this is the, uh, the other one we decided to use or bring in the Watutu uh, choir uh, from uh, they speak Swahili. The kids will be here with us. We're going to be putting them up out at the ranch. Some of you saw that we needed some sleeping bags and things of that nature because they usually stay, I think, in hotels. But we're going to keep them out, out at the ranch. So if you'd like to help in any way, please contact Tammy, Assistant Tammy, out at the office, and she's uh, orchestrating the food and the things for them. Our jewels going to meet on the 21st. And then Pastor Mike is going to be here with us. And I, I did a little rescheduling and decided, you know, what a great thing to do is to bring my pastor here on the 27th of January, which will be a Sunday, and have a note-burning service. <laughs> Amen. To burn the note on the properties here at, at uh, Crosby and New Caney. So, I mean, you know, Pastor Mike has been a man that's believed in me for all these years, and so I would like to have him here for the day that we burned the note. So we're going to, I'll go to San Antonio and pick him up. He'll be flying in today. I'm going to grab him, bring him here. So that's, that's a good thing. Let me have that mic right there. Sam, you'll pray us out of here. Amen. Thanks for coming today to our guests. Thanks for being here. Again, guys, there's oils left up here. There may be people here that you know that aren't here, uh, that, uh, that fast or are part of the church that aren't here today, and you can share with them what I share. You can bring them some oil if you'd like. It's your, you know, just at your disposal. Amen. God bless you. All right. Thank you. 
Father God, thank you so very much. It's in your presence where we do our best, Lord. Thank you for always being with us. Father God, as we continue on into this fast for the next three weeks, Father, we need your mighty presence even more. Father, may we always shine your mighty light in our communities. Continue to watch over us, strengthen our pastor. Let's pray for him. Watch over us until we meet again. Jesus, it's in your precious name we pray. Amen.